Hi, I'm here today to show the Pi Compact 10X, the Pi Compact 23, and the Pi Compact 23 with IO Link. It's a good solid ejector with the built in vac filter, the vacuum sensing, and one of the features that I always really like is the energy saving. The condition monitoring of this, which I'll demonstrate here, is all stuff that you guys are aware of, but it's, it's why Pi Ab exceeds over the competition of vacuum ejectors is because of this unit, I believe. So the 10X, which you guys are familiar with, obviously has a energy saving feature, has the built-in sensor, the built-in filter, and the condition monitor. I don't know if you guys are really aware of what that is. I can demonstrate it here real quick. So when I have a no leak application, my compressed air shuts off. No longer using compressed air. So the longer you're holding something, the more you're gonna take benefit of this. But a side effect to it is the silence of it. If you have an operator standing next to that ejector all day long, it's that much less compressed air purging into their ear. So a little bit more enjoyable to work around. So this is energy saving. We've, we've got this set to where it reaches a certain value. Did you hear it perch, this pulse? It, as it leaks down, it'll reach a lower set value. It'll switch on, reaches the lower set value, it pulses, it gets it back up to the high set value. And then there's a third set value, which is our switch output, which this one's not on. Somebody's messed with the setting, but we can change that real quick. The condition monitoring, how that works, is when you have three, if it reaches the high limit to the low limit three times within five seconds, it automatically switches to staying on constantly. So on this uh, MDF board here, I can demonstrate that a little bit easier. You'll hear it pulse, like trigger three times real fast. What all that is doing is this is a porous material, so it leaks. So instead of machine gunning your valves and trying to maintain that energy saving feature, the PIAB unit says, I can't do it, we're just going to stay on. Now the switch output would still be on. I'm still holding, it's still functioning, but now it kind of gives you a little bit of a uh, predictive maintenance almost. If your operator is saying, hey, this thing's Persian air all day long, well, you're able to come back and figure out, oh, the suction cup's wearing out, I've got a loose fitting, something along those lines. This, this unit here for the blow off is a control. So you'll, you can set it to blow off or you can even get them to where they do an auto blow off. So it's a certain time of blow off. So you don't have to have an extra output, possibly. When we get into the Pi Compact 23s, there's even another feature. It's intelligent blow off, which it says blow off until atmospheric pressures obtained. So whatever your system is, it's gonna know when to shut the blow off off. You don't need to do a timing, it's gonna be automatic. You guys know you can, you can adjust your blow off with a set screw. The blow off does not affect your vacuum level. So if you shut that off all the way, you're still gonna have full vacuum, according to the cartridges. When we wanna start getting into higher flow uh, modules, we'll go to the Pi Compact 23. It's a bigger cartridge. You still got the built-in filter, built-in vacuum sense, still the same kind of uh, energy saving, condition monitoring. Here we have auto level sensing. You can tell it to automatically calculate the best max and min vacuum levels. And so instead of having to set those parameters for each time, this will do it for you. This cup right here the other day held for four hours in my office. When I unplug the air and the power, it still holds vacuum. So it was, it was pretty impressive actually, four hours. This one, I haven't played with the settings here, but it's usually a set value. You know, and here it's still set to inches of mercury. But a lot of times I talk kilopascals, it's more the levels I'm used to. But you can set it to say, get to negative 70 kilopascals, max vacuum. Low vacuum is negative 50 kilopascals. My switch output is negative 40 kilopascals. I can, we can play with that today too. I have not had a chance to play with it. I got this kit late and I was like, ah, you know, I'm in a rush to get it, but we can play with that and test it. 
and see how it automatically sets its values. Because before in the past, the 10X, we're setting those values independently. So to expand from the Pi Compact 23X, we add IO Link, the new industry 4.0 path that everything's going. The nice thing about the IO Link is I can do all my setup parameters, and if it's PNP, NPN, that auto level sensing, if I want to turn energy saving on or off, do I want to have auto blow off, do I want to have intelligent blow off, that's all set through your IO completely configurable from your controller and we and we can play with that here as well. You have a, the whole window of uh, options to just establish through IO Link and it can change on the fly. The IO Link will do it through your controller so now it's a parameter change that you can push out instantly. They don't have IO Link for the Compact 10X. It's still just with the 23. I don't know if they're planning on making it a manifold type setup or not. It, the module size gets bigger, and that's what they're still trying to do is keep their size small. It looks like it's hard connected to the um, IM unit. What is your connection from your controller to that? An IO Link Master. That's one that's, if you look through the window, there's a Comtrol IO Link Master here. There's um, SICK has one, WAGO has one, and then Siemens. That from there, it's whatever protocol you want. Um, if you have an Ethernet IP, your IO master can, you just put an Ethernet IP IO master in line. They don't have Ethernet IP, it is just IO link, but again, that's where Industry 4.0 has been kind of directing, is an IO link master slave kind of combination. These Pi Compact 10Xs that I've been doing with, I've done quite a bit other than just house of design, and those are the first ones I've ever seen failures with. So that, that's pretty impressive. I I mean, I've seen what's out in the field. I see some of the conditions these things are in. Considering, considering some of the, the particles that can get put in the filters and how easy it could get plugged up or the cartridges get clogged or something along those lines, they really hold up well. So when you start talking efficiency, you start talking about reliability, the PIOB is a great solution.